the Doppler effect. In this short video we are going to look at the equation for the Doppler effect and then we'll do an example or two. The Doppler effect is the apparent change in frequency or pitch of the sound detected by a listener because the sound source and the listener have different vel velocities relative to the medium of sound propagation. So the equation that we use for calculating the frequency observed by a listener is this equation. You guys get this on your data sheet. What all these symbols stand for is as follows. F subscript L is the frequency that the listener or the observer hears. F subscript S is the frequency of the source. That would be the ambulance, the police vehicle or a dolphin if a submarine is detecting the sound of a dolphin, etc. V above and below the line is the velocity of the sound in the medium. It could be the velocity of sound in air or if it is the dolphin and the submarine example then it would be the sound um, of the speed of sound in seawater. V subscript L is the velocity that the listener or observer is traveling and V subscript S is the velocity of the source, the thing that is giving off the sound. For your examples, either the velocity of the listener or the velocity of the source will be zero. One of these two will be stationary. Either the observer, the listener, or the source will be stationary. So you will have one of two scenarios. One of the objects will be moving towards the other or away from the other. Those are your two types of examples that you will have. If an ambulance is moving towards you and you are stationary, you will hear or perceive a higher frequency, you are the listener, you will perceive a higher frequency or pitch than the actual frequency of the source. Once the ambulance has passed you and it's moving away, you will perceive a lower frequency than the frequency of the source. So applying this equation in each of these cases, if, just think about it like this, if you want a higher frequency perceived by the listener, we're going to add the top and subtract the bottom. And if the object is moving away, you're going to perceive a lower frequency than the frequency of the source. You're going to subtract the top and add the bottom. So if you can remember these two equations which come from that one, you should be fine with these calculations. Here's our first question. A submarine can use the Doppler effect to detect the speed of a ship. A submarine at rest and just below the surface of the water detects the frequency of the moving ship as 437 hertz, which is 0 0.985 times the actual frequency of the sound emitted by the ship. The speed of sound in water is 1,470 meters per second. First of all, they're going to ask you to state the Doppler effect in these questions. Well, normally they do. I'm not going to go through that now. I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. And laws and definitions you guys can really do on your own. Then the second question. Is the ship moving away from or towards the submarine? Give a reason for your answer. We have a clue here that the frequency that is detected is 0 0.985 times the actual frequency. So the frequency detected is less than the actual frequency that is given off. So the answer for 1.2 is it is moving away from the submarine because the frequency that the listener or the observer detects is less than the actual frequency of the source. It is 0 0.985 times less than the actual frequency of the source. In 1.3, they ask you to calculate the speed of the ship. The ship is moving, it's moving away from the submarine, we've established that. So the submarine is stationary. Um, it's the ship that is giving off the frequency, so the observer is the submarine. The ship is the source and the observer is the submarine. Now we're going to apply our equation, the one that applies to when the one object moves away from the other. So we have a minus at the top 
and a plus at the bottom. We do not have either of these two frequencies, but we do know that the frequency that is observed is 0 0.985 times the frequency of the source. So we've got frequency of the source on the left hand side of the equal side and frequency of the source on the right hand side. This is the actual frequency of the source and this is the frequency that is observed by the listener, the submarine. This is the frequency given off by the ship. This is the frequency observed by the submarine. It is 0 0.985 times the frequency of the source. This is the speed of sound in the water. Our submarine is not moving and they asked you to calculate the speed of the ship. So we're going to do some cancelling out here. The, these two cancel and I'm going to simplify and we'll work from there. So here is your final answer. As I said, you cancel out the frequency of the source on either side. You multiply out your bracket and you just solve Vs, which is the velocity of the ship. The answer is 22,39 meters per second. I am now going to look at an alternative way of answering question 1.3. In the previous answer, I did not make use of the 437 hertz which is the frequency um, detected. They tell you that this frequency is 0 0.985 times the actual frequency. So the actual frequency given off, if subscript S, is going to be a bigger value. So all I do now is I know that the frequency that is detected is equal to 0 0.985 times the actual frequency. We have this value, it is given 437. So remember, this is an alternative way of answering. You either do the one that I did in red or you use this method. They do not have to give you this value because we can work it out as I did in the previous answer. So let's get back to this. So the frequency that is detected is 437 and that is equal to 0 0.985 times the actual frequency. So we just substitute our values in and you can calculate the actual frequency that is emitted by the moving ship. Remember we use this equation with a negative at the top and the positive at the bottom because the ship is moving away from the submarine. So we substitute our values in. There's the frequency detected which is given in the question. This is the actual frequency given off, the source. Um, this we worked out up there. So just substitute all your values in and you get the same answer, 22,39 meters per second as we got before. Question 2. Light emitted from distant stars demonstrates the phenomenon known as redshift. Explain how the phenomenon known as redshift can be used to explain an expanding universe. A redshift implies that light emitted by the stars shows a shift towards the lower frequencies of the spectrum. In other words, they have longer wavelengths. So if the frequencies are lower, the perceived frequencies are lower, that means that the stars are moving away, away from the Earth, away from each other. So they, that implies that the universe is, is expanding. Now the third and the last question. Absorption spectra from the Sun and another galaxy is shown below. Study the atomic absorption spectra and answer the questions that follow. So here's the spectrum from the Sun. These are the actual lines. The spectrum from the other galaxy, the lines are shifted more towards the left hand side. And in this case, it's more towards the blue side. So if the lines have shifted more towards the blue side, we call this a blue shift. So the question is, does the spectrum of the other galaxy consist of a red shift or a blue shift? The answer here is blue shift. Just for interest, a blue shift implies a contracting galaxy. So the bodies in the galaxy are moving towards each other. A higher frequency will be perceived. We are now going to look at another example. Please just ignore the fact that it says question 33. It's our question 2. Um, the sketch below shows a stationary ambulance. The siren of the ambulance emits sound waves of a frequency of 700 hertz. So that is the frequency of the source. F subscript S 
is uh, 700. The driver of a car approaching the ambulance passes it at a constant speed. Here it is approaching the ambulance. Here the car is directly at the ambulance and there it has passed the ambulance. So I'm back here. The driver of a car approaching the ambulance and passing it at a constant speed observes the frequency of the emitted sound waves to change by 80 hertz. So from this position to that position, the frequency of the sound that this occupant observes is a change of 80 hertz. So from there to there, the frequency has changed by 80 hertz. So name and state the wave phenomenon illustrated above. It's the Doppler effect and you should know how to state it by now. Then the second question, take the speed of sound in air as 340 meters per second and calculate the speed at which the car passes the ambulance. We have been given three things here. The frequency of the sound emitted, Fs. We have the speed of sound in air, which is V in our equation. And we know that the change in frequency is 80 hertz. So how would we go about solving this question? We have two sections. We have two wards. And we have a way, so we're going to be using both equations. I'm going to call this position 1 and that position 2. So this is frequency of listener in position 1 and this one is frequency of the listener in position 2. This is towards, that is away. So towards we have the positive at the top, the negative at the bottom and away we have the negative at the top and the positive at the bottom. This frequency perceived will be greater than that frequency that is perceived. So this frequency minus the, that frequency will give you 80 hertz. So I have put that in an equation. Just move this up. Okay. So this is towards, that is away. This if at listener 1 is there, if at listener 2 is there. So I'm going to take these two terms and substitute them into this equation. And this difference is 80 hertz. So substitute all your values in. So there we go. We've substituted all the values in. The frequency of the source is 700. The velocity of the speed of sound, the velocity of the sound um, is 340 meters per second. And the difference is 80 hertz. So a quick way of um, just simplifying this is to multiply with whatever is at the bottom. So I multiply it with all three terms to get rid of the 340. And I divide all three terms by 700. So that is why I have multiplied by 340 and divided by 700 here. And from these two terms, they have just disappeared. So simplify everything and you will get the velocity to be 19,43 meters per second. So the car is traveling at 19,43 meters per second.